the LG C1 to the right, the Samsung S95B to the left. This is going to be round two. A lot of people wanted to know if you lower the brightness and you kind of put them into a similar standing, does the EOTF tracking simply over brighten everything and destroy everything on the Samsung like we've seen being claimed on HDTV test? Well, frankly, the answer is no. It's not an overly bright TV that destroys things. And if you turn down the brightness, you can absolutely get the same kind of look, if you will, coming out of an LG in some areas. Now, it's also important to note that, yes, they are very different TVs and they do different things, but the Samsung is also not like a, a shock and awe TV that doesn't have any accuracy and looks terrible. And in fact, it beats LG in a lot of ways. And that's what this video will showcase. This is the first scene that I kind of want to play for you guys in the Spider-Man Remastered video game. Now, as I look at it with my naked eye, the reds on the LG definitely appear more muted and pale by comparison. Probably will not show up on YouTube, but that's something to think about. Also, it's kind of hard to look at the LG by comparison because they are doing very different things. Like, you know, Samsung catches your eye almost immediately with the luminosity behind every light on the building. LG, not so much. Now, it's the depth and the clarity of the LG that I do find to be impressive, but then I look over at the Samsung and it has every bit as much of the depth and clarity. And in fact, the greens in that particular moment just back there was incredible. And it was something that like you have to see to believe like the, the level of vibrancy without being way oversaturated or gross, like what's pretty much being claimed is just an inaccurate TV is is a, it's, a, it's a sight for sore eyes, as I've been saying, but it's also really cool. Now, one of the weak points of the Samsung is that when you get to more additive colors like your cyans or like your yellows, depending on the scene, sometimes you might have a better representation of those things like browns on the LG. So that's a win for the LG 100%. You know, I don't know. It It's one of those things like as I watch the action kind of kick off, they both do something incredibly different. So let's move to the next scene. I actually really love using this scene from Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah, that's the one, not Zero Dawn, Horizon Forbidden West, because it really does capture a lot of the detail in the, in the sand. I mean, look at the difference. You can almost see it immediately. The sand almost looks white on the LG, where on the Samsung, it looks like actual sand. And then the fog coming in from the mountains look better. The skin tones look day and night better, like on the LG to the right, I am noticing more pale, more washed out skin tones across the board. You know, even the skin tones in black people don't really look very good. You're not noticing that it has that like that reddish hue to the brown to make it look like the brown it's supposed to look like. It's more of a cooler image. And that, again, it doesn't really look as lifelike, you know, because there's blood underneath people's skin. So naturally, there's there's a little bit of a hue to, you know, skin tonalities that just doesn't really appear as naturally on the LG. Now. This is starting to crush out a little bit, so I'll go to the next scene. When we look at movies, specifically, I've been looking at a lot of Far From Home. Uh, it, it's just, or I think this is actually No Way Home, uh, this final Spider-Man, not final, but uh, the latest Spider-Man movie from Tom Holland. And it, you just see so much more on the Samsung than you do on the LG. So what the LG does right, you know, they're giving you, like, more accuracy, I would say, in terms of the hair color. So, like... Hair color more accurate, hues to the background definitely more accurate for sure, but that's kind of where the party stops because when you start looking at those primary colors like red and like the green, you look at the highlight detail, you look at like the highlight popping off of the jacket here, like just way better and it's way dimmer. I mean like little things like that play a role. But also like this concept of like, oh, it's just an S curve and it's like gonna crush everything out that's not the case if you know how to tune these TVs and you're clearly seeing it like dude like in a low-lit scene you won't have any real problems in fact if you look at a scene like this I mean like you can see the luminosity gains over the LG the LG is so dark in this scene like it's kind of really hard to see compared to the Samsung S95B where you just see all of the luminosity and you see all of the pop and punch now the darkness that the LG does have does tend to favor more in the way of I suppose clarity because it's not as bright but at the same token you are missing out on so much more of that expression that just draws you in on the samsung like it's literally day and night now as we look at games like hogwarts legacy and what it can potentially look like on the samsung s95b we can see that like 
versus the C1, they get kind of comparable in a lot of areas, like in this particular scene. They both look very identical, like looking at it with my naked eye. Uh, I mean, really, it's hard to tell the difference between the two, like if you actually are looking at it. Don't know what the camera will show, but that's what it looked like on my end. And again, these are pretty identical. Now there is an edge to the C1 to the right in that last scene we saw. Now the Samsung has taken the cake by far. Contrast clarity is just through the roof on the Samsung. LG not really able to keep up too much with the colors being reproduced now. And it does look a little bit worse by comparison if we're being completely honest here. Also, I mean, as I look at it, I'm just noticing like it, you're talking about color reproduction, the greens, the primaries, all of them do look better on the Samsung S95B here. And it's weird because it's like when you start getting into gaming content, things start getting a little bit different. And it's, I don't know, it's, it's give and take, I suppose. So let's put up something else to see if we can't see something different. Now to give you a good idea between the difference in cyan reproduction, here we are in Dragon Ball Super and you see Ultra Instinct Goku firing off uh, Ultra Kamehameha. And I mean, it just looks better on the C1. You can notice that there is a lot more of the cyan reproduction around here, where on the Samsung, it is a little bit more faint by comparison. So that does take a little bit away from the immersion level that you can have in these kinds of anime sequences. And now as we can see, between the two TVs, it becomes like the weirdest thing ever. So like the Samsung to the left ends up being like more vibrant for things like red and things like that. I can't go any lower on my ISO, so I can't really show much more than this. But it's weird because like the, the colors coming out of the LG over here look really good. I mean, it's hard. They, they, they both... They both slap so incredibly hard that it's just like, wow. But I do notice that in the background in the Cosmos back here, very hard to see, very nuanced detail, more detail on LG than we have on Samsung, where that's kind of not really as pronounced and the contrast is just not there as much. So in anime content, it again, you're gonna find that it goes back and forth. Take this scene, for example, in Demon Slayer, the entertainment arc, which is the season two of Demon Slayer. I mean, it just is a total domination on LG. Like the Samsung looks way better. I don't even look at LG at all, like at all when I'm looking at this. Like all the catch lights in her eyes, all the ambient glow from the fire in front of her, like you feel that moment 100% and believe it 100% on the Samsung. On LG, it is not believable. And these are the kind of differences as well, like even in anime, you're gonna notice. Now moments like this can feel a bit more identical, but the highlight detail coming off of Tanjiro's sword, bro, is just like, Forget about it. And as you look at it on a paused frame, you can clearly see that there is way more depth coming off of the Samsung than what's coming off of the LG. Now, one of the beautiful things too is that the image while paused is more clear on the Samsung. So that means that motion for this particular example is slightly better on the Samsung than what we have on the LG where again, we kind of already did the motion test and we already know that the Samsung beat it a little bit in motion. So this kind of proves all that, that even on a pause frame, you're not running into artifacts or motion blurring or smearing. It's just a really sharp, clear image on a pause frame. So yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy like watching this stuff play out. I think scenes like this though are like crazy on both TVs and I'll just be a little slick here for a second. I mean like that, dude, like this scene is like anime royalty right now. like destroys the internet good okay like it's it's fantastic if you ever want to reward yourself like watch the opening of season two of demon slayer the entertainment district arc and you'll see what the benefits of the samsung s95 br over the lg like immediately the highlights the brightness like all of it like in this moment where it like pops off like this and it looks so pretty like it's a showpiece plain and simple like it's incredible like bro now to spice things up, I've gone ahead and set this particular uh, trailer here to 720p. One of the biggest questions I'm getting is about upscaling, so we're going to see what that looks like in real time. Now, if I'm looking at it with my naked eye, so far between the two, it's kind of hard to tell the difference if I'm being very honest with you. One of the things I do notice though is that Samsung does have just a slight m uh, amount more clarity. So I think this is due in part to their neural processor. Like I see a lot more of the stubble in the face and the wrinkles now. So it's like, it's give and take, I suppose, with these things. Sometimes one will look better than the other and vice versa. Like now, the C1 just looks so much better. That BT2020 is coming in clutch. However, primaries and highlights look better on the, uh, on the Samsung. 
But it's that extra cyan push, I'm telling you, like time and time again that I keep looking at on the LG C1 that keeps it in this fight. And like, like for everything the Samsung delivers, the C1 comes back and it like delivers something extra special in its own right. Then it, it becomes like, yeah, it doesn't have vibrant colors close to what we have on the Samsung like now. These vibrant colors, forget about it. Like the Samsung is destroying it with vibrancy. But then like, again, it's like the little subtle colors. Like I was saying, like the cyan now from the background of the fog and you know, all that stuff like the ambient light, like that kind of stuff does help. And again, if we're looking at clarity, the clarity is absolutely there on the Samsung S95B as we look at, again, upscaling of 720p content and things like that. So now let's take it a step further and we're going to drop it down to 480p, right? We're gonna be like really dramatic here because we wanna see what, what it looks like with 480p, really low res video, okay. Both now look like potato cam, but which one looks like less than potato cam? So for text and you know, actually overall, I actually am seeing more clarity on the Samsung. So as I'm going back and forth between, looking between both, just it's like, again, it's, it's slightly clearer, but the contrast and the clarity is definitely there. And I'm looking at it now, especially with the text. That's definitely where we're seeing the difference. So from an up, upscaling perspective, the Samsung is definitely doing the better job. So then let's go ahead and raise it back up to 1080p, right? We're gonna run it back and we're gonna see those moments again, right? I, I love the cyan reproduction on the C1. That was glorious just then. And, and that, those are kind of moments in games that you're gonna, you're gonna have a lesser experience on the Samsung with. And that's, that's one of my things, like Samsung with not having a hue saturation luminance slider of doing things, they are holding themselves back from really competing with TVs. And I suspect when the Sony comes out, that's gonna be one of his big strong suits. I really do. The Cyan is gonna be like a major like dif differentiator and it changes a lot of things. Like it's hard to believe that Cyan isn't a core color, like a main color, because it totally is. As we're seeing even now, like the difference, the C1 looks majorly better, like by a lot, like by a lot right now. The Samsung just looks like it has one flat shade of blue, no matter how much work you put into it. You know, you can get it a little bit better at the expense of your white balance or something else, but it's just, it's always an uphill battle, it kind of seems. Now I wanted to show you guys from a depth perspective, which TV is better at processing depth overall in games and things like that. Again, this is dependent on how you adjust brightness. So to say that one is just definitively better than the other, it does go back and forth and it will depend on what you watch and how willing you are to switch between settings and things like that. I mean, just look at this image right now. Like the Samsung is destroying the LG in depth right now. There is no, no kind of comparison that I can make that I could look at to say that like LG isn't getting beaten pretty badly. And again, that has a lot to do with the way that, again, Samsung renders contrast at lower brightness level. So it's weird to me that like people try to say that like LG looks better just kind of like as like a flat up, like it just looks better. And by people, I mean Vincent from HGTV Test, because as we're clearly seeing like in real time, straight up, like no nonsense, like, it, it, that's not really the case here. And I find it like across multiple kind of content pieces that I notice things looking a little bit better for the Samsung by a pretty substantial margin. Like now, for example, as we get into this image, I'm noticing way more contrast and deep blacks. And honestly, when that's the case, you really got to look at this for what it is. Like the Samsung is just hitting on an entirely different level. But to be fair to LG's credit, they're hitting right next to them equally hard for that particular example. So it's, it's a back and forth, but that's what this is all about. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching the number one brand in honesty and just kinda of going through this again, seeing between the two, which one performs better than the other. And honestly, man, as I go back and forth, I'm looking at all these game trailers and all the movies I've watched. I mean, they are very comparable TVs to one another. I mean, LG gives me a lot of depth and some color accuracy in some areas that the Samsung doesn't give me. Samsung gives me some vibrancy and color accuracies in some area that LG doesn't. But I mean, it, the back and forth is real. It's, it's a very real thing. And I think if you're on the fence about one versus the other, you win with either one. So again, thanks for watching the number one brand in honesty. Until the next video, I'll see you guys later.